My name is Vahid Chitza, as part of Elite Mastermind Group. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. All right, I'm Israel Magukin, uh, tuning in from California, Southern California. It's beautiful weather today. It's actually <laughs> very, very beautiful. I agree with that. So let's dive into it. I want to get into, I was watching some of your Instagram posts, and they, there were a couple of words that kept coming up. And I want to kind of define them and get your interpretation on them and how we utilize them as an entrepreneur, as a business one. The sure. first one that comes into mind is action. What does action mean? Action. Mm, massive action. Action is a powerful word, isn't it? It's the, the word that comes before result. Uh, many of us have the dream. They have the hope. They have the desire, the goal, the true north. Uh, and they so desperately want the result, but they've got the action. And that massive action gives massive result. Little action gives little result. And so for myself, I'm always talking about what I call the uh, success triangle. You know, my belief system in myself, my confidence, my self-worth, uh, confidence, my skill set, that always determines my action. If I'm afraid of failure, my action will be small to nothing. But if I'm confident that I can do this, that I've got this, then my action is going to be a lot bigger. And therefore, my results are going to be a lot bigger. And so I want great, big results. Therefore, massive action is what we have to take. I agree with that 100%. So you brought up that my second word that I was working on, you you had a post and you said confidence is attractive. Now, I understand why you're saying it, but how do we build up our confidence in what it is that we do? Because a lot of people, I see they lack confidence, not right. just in themselves, also in their skills and what they do. Not that they don't know it, but it, they don't come off as a person that, you know, you, you speak to somebody after like two, three minutes, you're like, this guy knows what he's talking about. Like, I'm going to I'm gonna trust him with what he does. He's cool. Right. Like, you don't even have to say it. You don't even think about it. But you do think about it. You're like, it's cool. You already made that equation that this is the guy that you could trust for this task or this job or this project, whatever the case might be. How do we build that confidence to that level? Right. I think it's, it's self-worth, the belief in yourself. And that's where it begins. Uh, there's this thing called the imposter syndrome. A psychological disorder where people feel that they're a poser. So I'm, I'm a motorcyclist. I, I ride motorcycle all over the country, done 35,000 miles just on this one bike, 27 states. Uh, but I don't have the tattoos and the leathers. Uh, but then there's guys riding up and down the boulevard. They only ride the boulevard. But they've got the tattoos, the leathers, you know. And Well, which one is the real biker? You know. Uh, but the problem is many of us uh, feel like we are imposters because we don't believe in our own value. And so I was talking about, when you talk about getting confidence, I talk about adding value. So in other words, if, if I want to be a good communicator, that's one thing. But if I get a diploma that says good communicator, trained communicator, I may have a little more confidence uh, to say I actually am that. Uh, but I would say going back to that success or results triangle where your belief, action, mm -hmm. result, uh, that's the thing right there. So often we're trying to get these big results too quick. Instead of taking little bites at a time, little bites at a time, because we have all at some point failed ourselves. At some point we made a promise, a New Year's resolution, you know, we set a goal, we didn't keep it. And we know that we lied to ourselves and we failed ourselves. So the next time we come and make a New Year's resolution or promise, what do we think about ourselves? That's nah, never going to happen. And so our belief in the wrong, the failure gets bigger and bigger. Instead of that little victory, you know, where you uh, say, okay, today I'm not going to eat sugar. I want to lose 100 pounds. Today, I'm not going to eat sugar. But some people say, for 30 days, I'm not going to eat sugar. Then they fail, disappointment. 
they lose confidence. And so I was talking about setting little goals, realistic goals, little goals, that you can have little victories. When you have a little victory, ha, ah, your confidence just went up. You know, and you keep doing that, your confidence builds, and eventually you become this attractive, magnetic person just because of your confidence, and you become this trusted resource uh, that everybody wants to work with, be engaged with, be friends with. I agree. I mean, keeping the promises to yourself, I think, is very, very important. I Absolutely. think that's 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 what gets the build up. I mean, it's okay. I mean, I miss it once in a while too myself. I have to catch myself. I'm like, okay, I promised this to myself, regardless of the outside sources, outside people. Like, it's okay if other people don't know it, but I know it. Right, right. So I got to keep it to myself. Absolutely. I think that's way more important. People worry about lying to other people, and I always say, lying to yourself is way more important. They're right. lying to other people Absolutely. because, you, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's there. So, okay, what's the definition of a coach and coaching? Is it just me reading a book? Is it just me watching some YouTube videos? If somebody's watching our video, could can we say they're getting coaching from us? Or is that like one-on-one? -on -one? What is your definition of that? All right, well, it's very simple for me. Uh, you know, the original word for coach is Koski. Uh, which is a term that comes uh, from way back, I think, Bel Bulgarian, uh, somewhere there. Uh, don't quote me on that, <laughs> where it came from. But it, but it means a horse-drawn carriage. And so a coach is the coachman of the carriage. You who's been coached comes and says, I want to go get on this coach and I want to go to Central Park in New York. Well, I want to go to the Empire Building. That's their target. That's their goal. The coach then lets them get on the carriage and he drives them. All the while, he's asking them great questions and makes the journey very interesting, the process, until they get there. And it's these questions. Uh, coaching is not therapy. Uh, I'm a, a, a degreed counselor. It's not counseling. Uh, it's not telling, it's asking. And so for me, a good coach is all about asking profound questions that help the, the person, the hero, the client uh, discover for themselves what the answer is as opposed to me telling them. Because that question that leads to self-discovery gets them to believe it for themselves. Again, we back at their belief system. Uh, when I tell them, they say, well, who do you think you are? Or what do you know? Or you, you haven't had the pain I have. Or, you know. So I don't try and tell them. I just try to ask the right question. And by asking the right question, the profound question, not just any question, the profound question, you get a profound answer in themselves. And that profound answer leads them to action, action to results. So, so those questions, do they typically... Do individuals need to come up with answers right then and there, or is there something that they need to actually go put some thought into? Because I feel like if you ask me some questions, I, I might be able to ask answer your questions on right. the spot. But then if you're asking me profound questions, then I might need to say, okay, then I need to get back to you on that. Right, absolutely. And so that's why a coaching session for me could just be one question, be because it's a deep dive. We, we, we're not going to get the results if we don't do a deep dive. And so, you know, putting somebody on a schedule, a coaching schedule, I'll see you every Thursday, is not always the smartest thing. Uh, because you've got to give them time to, to, to find the answers. And that's why I call it a process. Remember the guy, the coachman in the carriage? He's taking you on a journey. He's very curious. He's asking questions about you. He's a good listener. And that journey, you've got to turn left, jab, go right there, over the hill there, down the hill there. Uh, this is a process. And we've got to, uh, to have successful coaching results, we've got to give people time for the process. And they have got to sign up commitment-wise to the process. Uh, you know, uh, I, I do a lot of horse riding. I'm a horse trainer. I do leadership training through horsemanship. And so one of the things I, I teach in horsemanship, the life in you is the life in your horse. 
If you get in the horse, you go, ah, yeah, you know, that horse is going to bolt, you're going to fall off, you know, it's a stupid horse. Uh, but if you sit there like a bag of potatoes, the horse is going to stand there still. Uh, so the life in you is the life in the horse. And so this is the same thing. As much as you give yourself to the process of personal development, of coaching, as much as you give yourself, so you'll get out of it. I agree with that. And and you said the right word. I think I want to I wanna shed some light on it. It's the commitment to the process. Right. Because the process might be a month. The process might be six months. The process might be two years. Right. Sometimes for big companies, the process might be 10 years. Right. You know, they have a decade-long goal. So it's, um, you know, John Absolutely. F. Kennedy, our president, didn't say we're going to put a man on the moon next year. He said, we're going to give ourselves the next 10, you know, it was a decade and he right. had a goal. And, and that was with a lot of, I mean, they were scrambling. So sometimes some goals take some time to be able to, but the process is very, very important. But right. that doesn't mean that the process is not fun. You know, right. you can make the process fun and enjoyable. You could make money, a lot of other different things. So here's my question. Based on your coaching skills and experience, that dealing with a lot of different people. Who are the best students or mentees? Are there the executives, the big guys that, that run big companies, or are there little guys, little business? Which ones have their egos? And I want to know who are the type of people that, you know, I know some coaches, they like the, the, the tough ones, the hard-headed ones, the ones that nobody wants to work with. And then there are other coaches that are like, listen, this is not my guy. I like to, you know, so what's your type? Well, you know, I, I'm, I work with executives. So uh, that is my speciality. Uh, you know, I've coached uh, financial gurus, uh, Fortune 500 companies, presidents, prime ministers, world famous kings and queens. Uh, that level of coaching, I've addressed nations, uh, televised addresses uh, for nations, spoke at 150,000 people. But then I've also done the housewife, you know, who's trying to manage a home and trying to get a kid sorted out. And here's the thing. It doesn't matter who you are. The process is still the same. The process is still the same. So it's just a matter of, A, asking profound questions that pertain to that situation. Now, obviously, in executive coaching, they're going to be paying top dollar. The housewife's going to pay bottom dollar. Uh, but it's not about the money for me. It's about helping people. And so I don't uh, uh, turn away people who want coaching. You know, whether it's the small person just starting up, trying to get his feet on the ground, trying to breathe, uh, or whether it's the, that executive, like the one Fortune 500 company wanted to increase their bottom dollar by a billion the next year, uh, and they were stuck. They call me in. They pay me a lot of money to get in there. I sit in the owner's office, the guy who drives the ship, and I ask him profound questions. Because, you know, he knows his business better than I do. He started it. He brought it up to be a Fortune 500 company. He's smarter about his business than I am. So this idea that I'm going to come and be smarter than you uh, and tell you how to do it, that that's not good. And so... For me, it's all about, you know, coming in there. I know you know more about yourself than I know about yourself. I know you know more about your business than I know about your business. Let me just ask the right questions that's going to unlock it. Because if I help the man, he will help his business. I think that's a, I think that's a very, I think it's a, it's a way more efficient way than you trying to act as if I know your business. Now, there might be businesses that, I might know better than them because of the background that I have. But that, generally speaking, that, will, that should not be the case because I can't be expert in right. every business. Right. So here's, if an individual entrepreneur is a starting up, what is that one profound question that they should be asking or one profound question that most people get stuck at responding to? What would that question be? Hmm. That, that is a good question. Uh, and, and I think most people... Uh, make a mistake. Can you sit on Shark Tank and these types of things? These guys come up with a great product. 
And because they have the great product, they think they have a business. Where we know that the value of the product and the business is only 5%. Cash flow is far more important than the product. Your business system is far more important than the product. Uh, there's so many other things that are more important than the product. And the most important thing is you. And that's why I'm so big on personal development. Because develop the man, develop the woman. The woman man becomes attractive. Now you, now you start becoming a trusted resource. When you become a trusted resource, people want to buy whatever you have. It doesn't matter what the product is now. What, what do you have? Because I know if you have it, it's worthwhile having. And, and so you become this attraction. And so for me, the question is, what I would say should be asked is, how can I develop myself to the place where I become an attraction to people? Then I'm going to ask, who do I want to be attractive to? Now I'm going to start talking demographics. We're going to talk, then we're going to go to product. You know, we're going to work down the line. But I'm going to start with the person because you're the business. Businesses make it and fail because of the person. That's why although, you know, franchises have a 80% chance or 75% chance of success and non-franchises have 25, 20% chance in five years of, of making it because they have their blueprint, even franchises fail because they have some guy running it that doesn't know what to do, right? And so for me, <laughs> for me, it's not necessarily, those things are secondary, they're secondary. But for me, what's primary is, how are you doing? How do you think? Because your framework of thought, I will make you or break you. Amen to that. What's your favorite self-help book? Wow, my, my favorite self-help book. <laughs> Look, I've read, I've read many of them uh, and many great mm -hmm. books out there. I want to be honest with you. Uh, the Bible for me is where I get everything out of. You know, uh, that is my number one self-help Bible. You know, uh, you talk about a coach. Uh, Jesus was a coach in the Bible. He asked profound questions. I yeah, some of the best motivational stories, some of the best motivational scripts right, right there. So Absolutely. I mean, if, if yeah. somebody dives into it, um, it, it's it's again, it's how we take it. Some people look at Bible as a religious book. Some people right. look at it as a wisdom book. Some people look at it as a self help book. So it's 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 how we look at that. Right. Some people right. will look at it and become more religious and go right. to church more often, do that route. Some people look at it and they look at the stories and are like. This is awesome. This guy didn't give up. I shouldn't give up either. This right. is how you do it. Let me, how can I apply this in my life? And that's how it is. And I believe, I mean, that's how it is with all holy books, not just Bible, but that's how I look at it. So it's like, right. what does that individual, and, and I use the example of the knife. You know, you give the knife to a doctor, potentially will heal somebody, but you give the same knife to somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, they're right. going to probably hurt somebody. So it's like how that individual takes it into use, the application of the content gets right. the result. So a lot of people, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Listen, Absolutely. I want to thank you. So, so how do people find you? How do people find me? All right, they can find me on Instagram uh, at Israel Magukin. They can find me on my Facebook page at Dr. Israel Biz, D-R Israel Biz. That's Facebook page. And then my uh, website, www.drisraelmagookin.com. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being here. Hopefully, we'll get to do a few other extra videos because some of the topics we talked about, <laughs> thank you. We, need to, we need to dive in more videos. Thanks for being here. Stay safe. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.